Hi everybody, today we are going to do a demo. Uh, the demo is going to be about flying a 747 uh, along the trajectory that we have defined here. So this is the parametric equations that define a helical path and uh, the challenge that we're going to have in flying this aircraft today is basically making sure that the axis of symmetry of this aircraft is always pointing along the velocity uh, vector. Okay, um, just uh, a quick uh, reminder here, uh, we have chosen the world reference frame of our simulation to be exactly the same as the reference frame in the VRML world. Um, so the z-axis is pointing towards you, the x-axis is pointing to the right, and the y-axis is pointing upwards. There is absolutely no reason as to why uh, the world reference frame in your simulation should coincide with those in the 3D world. Um, but if you decide not to do that, you want to make sure that the correspondence is always uh, taken care of uh, to make sure that you're able to get the same results uh, in, in, the, in, in the simulation and in the 3D animation. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is basically compute the velocity equations. Uh, since t was the parameter, we're going to assume that t is time. Uh, the velocity is obtained by the first derivative, and you can see that these are the equations uh, that we get. And this is one advantage of defining a trajectory parametrically, because it lends you to differentiate very easily. Uh, what our strategy is going to be, uh, to, what our strategy is going to be, uh, is basically trying to see if we can solve this uh, for the special case. Uh, the special case is b equal to zero, and that reduces the helical uh, equations to the equations of circular motion. And our strategy will be uh, to see uh, whether we can get this aircraft to move so that the axis of symmetry is always a tangent, uh, which is the same direction as the velocity vector uh, for, this, uh, for this motion. Okay, so we're looking at the aircraft from above. The y-axis is pointing towards us, the z-axis is pointing downwards, and the x-axis is pointing to the right. Okay. Uh, if we have to uh, define this rigid body, um, VRML basically requires you uh, to uh, give two rigid body descriptors. Uh, and for those of you who are familiar with the th theory of rigid body, uh, mechanics will recognize this at once, that any motion, any rigid body motion can be expressed as a combination of translational and rotational motion. So VRML requires you to give the translational coordinates, uh, which we have already obtained. Uh, however, when it comes to rotation, what it requires you to do is basically give the rotation uh, as a function of uh, the world reference frame that it is rotating about. And the rotation has to be expressed in an axis angle representation. So what the axis angle representation is, is basically you have to specify two things. Uh, the first thing is the vector around which uh, the rotation is taking place. And theta is the amount of rotation that is taking place around that particular vector. Okay. So what we're going to define in, in our strategy is that we're going to define this rotation vector as the cross product of the velocity vector and the z, ax uh, the, the z axis over here. Okay. And our argument is that uh, if you take the velocity vector and you cross product it with this particular z vector, you'll always get a vector that is pointing along the y axis. And we do indeed see that it is basically rotating around that particular vector. Okay. And the amount of rotation uh, will be given by the dot product of this velocity vector and the z vector. Uh, please note that I have not taken uh, the cross product and tried to obtain uh, the theta as a sine inverse of that. It's because uh, the uh, sine inverse function that I use uh, in MATLAB uh, gives me a value between minus pi by 2 and pi by 2, but I would like to be able to obtain a value between 0 and pi. All right. So having said that, uh, what we're going to do is uh, go to MATLAB and uh, basically write code uh, to simulate this. Um, just want to quickly mention here that we are not going to use Simulink for this demonstration. Uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one reason is that it's going to be an overkill. Uh, we're not solving for dynamic equations. Uh, we already have the equations of motion, and so we should be able to plug this directly in MATLAB. The second thing is that I want to be able to show you how you can use MATLAB uh, and program in uh, your 3D uh, animation. Uh, the third thing is uh, Simulink 3D animation was formerly known as a Virtual Reality Toolbox, so it has still not lost its roots. We just need MATLAB in order to use Simulink 3D animation. You don't require Simulink. All right, so having said that, let's go to MATLAB and uh, program this. So let's go ahead and open up the MATLAB editor. 
So let's start coding uh, the equations of motion. Uh, let's say t is the parameter. We start from 0, and we say it's 0 0.02 slash 2 star pi. Okay, we're going to call a as equal to 5, b is equal to 0. So before I proceed any further, uh, I need to build up the 3D world uh, because I need to open up the 3D world uh, from the code itself and then plug in uh, the translation and the uh, rotation descriptors in there. All right. So what I'm going to do is today I'm going to do something very different. Uh, I'm going to show you a different way uh, by which you can open up the vRealm editor. So uh, this is a free editor that ships with Simulink 3D animation and you can use it to quickly author uh, 3D worlds in vRML. All right, so this is where my MATLAB is installed. And how do I know that? If I go back to MATLAB and type MATLAB root, this is what uh, the installation directory is. So if I click on toolbox, and if I scroll down to uh, SL3D, I see that this is where all the files for Simulink 3D animation are installed. If I click on vRealm folder, it brings me to this particular folder, and if I click on Program, I see that this vrbuild2.exe is basically the executable that gets launched whenever you try to open up the editor. All right, so you can quickly go ahead and create a shortcut uh, on your desktop. Okay, so you can go ahead and create uh, a shortcut uh, for your desktop. All right, um, what we're going to do today is I'm going to simply go ahead and click on this. All right, and I'm going to build up my 3D world. I'm going to click on New to open up a new scene. The next thing I'm going to do is add a background node just to make the scene look more interesting. Then I'm going to go to Libraries, and I'm going to click on Import From. I see there are three libraries, Material, Object, and Texture. I'll click on the Object Library. You can see that there are a variety of libraries already in here. And the one that I'm really interested in is the transportation air library. And you can clearly see that there are a variety of objects that I can choose from. Okay, so I'm going to choose Boeing 747. Okay, and I'm going to click on this and drag it onto the new world node. Okay, and the moment I do that, I see that my scene has been populated with that object. I don't like the scaling here. So what I'm going to do is decrease the scaling so that I can see that aircraft. I'm going to decrease it to 0.1 along all the, uniformly along the x, y, and z axis. Okay. I'm going to click on the node here and name it as plane. I need to do that because I need to access this uh, object uh, from my code. So the next thing I'm going to do as, is add a viewpoint uh, because I want to be able to see the motion of this aircraft from two viewpoints. One is far away from this aircraft and the other one is looking downwards from the top. Okay, so I'm going to click on New World. And I'm going to insert a viewpoint. I'm going to expand this node. I'm going to first name this viewpoint. I'm going to call it as Far View. I'm going to set bind property so that I can see how this viewpoint looks like. What I'm going to do for this particular viewpoint is move myself away from this aircraft along the z-axis. So I'm going to change this value to 40. And, it, you, and you can clearly see that I have moved away from that aircraft. All right, so I'm going to add another viewpoint. I'm going to call this as top view. I'm going to set bind here to true. And for this guy, what I'm going to do is basically make this 0, make the y axis. I want to go higher up, so I'll call this 60. OK. And then I'm going to change the orientation. So I'm going to do a rotation around the x axis so that I can look downwards from the top. All right, so I'm going to change the axis here. I'm going to make this 1.0. I'm going to uncheck this so that that becomes the axis. And then I'm going to rotate myself. And you can clearly see that I'm able to see my aircraft right there. All right. So having done this, the next thing I want to do is go ahead and save this. I'm going to save this as my underscore plane dot WRL. And I'm going to close this now because I have my 
world. Go back to MATLAB and start coding this. The first thing that I need to do is basically create a VR world object. And then to do that, I use VR world dot WRL and call this new. I need to open it. And to make it visible, I need to use the VR figure function, very similar to the figure function in MATLAB. And if I execute this, I should be able to see the 3D world. Clearly, you can see that this is showing me the 3D world. And I can see the two viewpoints that I defined in there. All right. Alternatively, I can set the viewpoint programmatically from here. And if I execute this, I'll see that it takes me to the other viewpoint. All right, so let's go ahead and code this. We're going to create a for loop. Length of t, because that is the uh, number of points that we have. We're going to do a pause of 0 0.01. We're going to say that uh, we need to change the node properties. Uh, in order to do that, I need to first create a VR node object. And to do that, what I'm going to do is call this the node object and use the VR node function. And the node that I need access to is the plane node. So I come down here and I say airplane dot translation is equal to a star cos of t and is parameter parameterized and to update this at every uh, time step uh, what i need to do is use the vr draw now function this will update uh, the uh, visualization and this should do it all right, so let's go ahead and execute this. You can clearly see that I'm able to move this along a circle, but the orientation is still not fixed. So I'm just doing a dumb translation. All right, so to do the rotation, what I'm going to do next is define the vector z. I'm going to come down here and define velocity is equal to the difference uh, the, the the differential i'm going to call this vector which is the cross product I'm going to normalize it. To compute the theta angle, I do the same thing. I just copy this here. Make this the dot instead of cross. And then I do the norm. And then I come down here and set the rotation is equal to vector minus theta. Let's go ahead and visualize this. And you can clearly see that it is going around uh, that particular circle. So I'm going to increase the radius a bit to show you how this works. Do 
to show you from another viewpoint. I'm going to change this to far view. And you can clearly see it's doing its thing. All right, so our strategy seems to have worked for the special condition when b is equal to zero. What we're going to do next is basically put the value of b equal to one and see what happens. All right, so it seems to work. Wow. Seems to go up again. That's very interesting. We saw this weird 360 degrees flip. Let's do it once again. That's a flip. Now I've been told that when they uh, did the test flight for the 747, the pilot actually did this 360 degrees flip. All right, so our strategy does seem to work, but apparently there's something wrong uh, or incorrect with the way we have done our computation or the fact that we have tried to extrapolate a solution for the special case b equals zero to the three-dimensional case. And I'm going to leave that as a mystery for you to figure out, okay? So you have this code with you and try to figure out what is happening at that particular point uh, in the trajectory where it's doing the 360 degrees flip. Thanks for listening.